you were to open a guidebook to New Orleans cemeteries written, say, 30 years ago, it would most likely not mention Holt Cemetery, and if it did, it would dismiss it as unkept, unattractive, disorganized, uh, messy, trinkets strewn, strewn everywhere, and it, it would encourage you not to engage with it. I love cemeteries. As growing up in New Orleans, I've always loved our cemeteries. I actually live right around the corner from Holt. And it is, it is beautiful in its own way. You know, at first look, it looks like there's, there's trash everywhere. All of the graves are a little uneven, a little like, you know, poorly put together. But if you look closely, it's actually um, a frequently visited cemetery. It's one of the more frequently visited cemeteries in New Orleans and not a lot of people know that. You know, historically, uh, indigent cemeteries, potter's fields, pauper cemeteries are the places where people who either don't have families to claim the bodies or whose families don't have money to pay for those bodies to be buried in a, a, a proper cemetery. Those are where those people are, are interred. Uh, many, if not most, communities have some sort of place to bury people who either uh, no one has claimed or to bury people whose families can't afford a, uh, an expensive conventional cemetery burial. One of the interesting things to note about Holt is that I think it's no longer entirely accurate to describe it as a cemetery for the indigent. It was founded as a cemetery for the indigent, as a, a potter's field. However, now most of the people who use Holt are people who have a long family connection to Holt. Some people you know, who, with whom I've spoken don't like when people call it a, an indigent cemetery because they say, well, we have many choices of where we can bury our relatives, but that's where our family burial place is. You know, and, and, and we're not burying them there because it's cheap, we're burying them there because we are trying to keep our family together in one place. And so that's why I think it's very uh, important to, you know, to, to keep in mind how, how we describe it in the present. So we know that Holt was officially founded at around 1879. It was intended as a replacement for Locust Grove Cemetery. And well, what to do with the bodies of, um, of people in general is, is a problem in an urban environment. And you know, New Orleans is always associated with these, with the above ground cemeteries, with the, the architecture that everyone is, is, is aware of, the, the cities of the dead that New Orleans is, is famous for. Uh, but there has always been below ground burials uh, as well in the city. definitely identifies itself as having a very special uh, culture atta uh, attached to death and, and mourning and the commemoration of the dead. And, and Holt, um, as its own kind of distinctive space, is a part of that conversation too. However, also, while we are always tempted to see New Orleans as exceptional as this kind of least American of American cities and uh, the, this kind of unique case to itself. Cemeteries always tell us something about the culture of their, of, of the populations that use them. And, and people always place some kind of value on the places where their ancestors reside. And so while it, it is a special case here. It's all something that is a special case most, most anywhere that, that you go. Uh, what's funny about Holt is that people have talked about closing it down many times in the past. Uh, every time there is a, an official study of, of Holt, 
the recommendation has, has been to cease burials there. There are probably at least 50,000, 60,000 people buried in Holt. There are only around 4,000, 5,000 extant grave markers or grave plots. So we know that every bit of space within the cemetery has been reused countless times. You know, th this is not really a, a fixed target. Holt has evolved over the years and has looked very different at different times over the years. As best we can tell from the few, um, the few extant photographs and accounts of Holt in the first half of the 20th century or in the late 19th century, it was pretty, I wouldn't quite say well-maintained, but at least uh, pretty kept up. My research suggests that it's only in the period after World War II, you know, into the 1950s, the 1960s, and 1970s especially, that Holt takes on its, its, the appearance that we now associate with it. I think it's no coincidence that this is happening in the civil rights era. As civil rights are becoming a contentious issue, I think there are people in the city who are turning away from from spaces like this that are, are problematic. And ironically, that's how Holt comes to have this, this unique appearance that we, everyone associates with it now. Because when the city turns away from it and neglects it, then that ironically allows families to approach commemorating the places where their loved ones are buried with more creativity and more inventiveness when America's interest in and romanticization of, you know, what for lack of a better term is often called like the black authentic or the black vernacular waxes and wanes. Right now we are in a phase where white America tends to romanticize places like Holt and, and, and uh, express a lot of interest in places like Holt. Now I think there's a, obviously a danger in that and that, that attracts visitors who might not necessarily respect the space. Uh, and most famously, we have the case of Wiccan practitioners removing bones from Holt Cemetery, selling them online, selling them on Facebook. There's a considerable danger that in this, that this new interest in Holt Cemetery is going to physically damage the space that is already takes a lot of work to maintain. I spend a lot of my time working in the cemetery, and I can tell you that there are a lot of disrespectful tourists and they may not know it they may just be having a fun time in New Orleans but um, there are a lot of people that seem to not realize this is you know a place of remembrance for people New Orleans a city of mystery a city that one million people proudly call home at least the ones above ground Two on top of in the middle of in front of and that's where we got the heaviest ectoplasm the and the most orbs. And orbs don't mean a whole lot to many people, but of course it can be explained away easily. But these are very unusual in that they had color, they were half orbs. Some of them appeared to have faces. And so it became also important to me to make our work as, acad as academic researchers articulate with the concerns of people with um, relatives and friends and loved ones buried in hold what may look like a discarded trinket to an outsider is an object that had enormous meaning often to the loved one who decided to place it where they placed it. There are so many people with deep emotional connections to their family burial places at Holt. I, I don't think the solution is to, um, to end burial there completely. You know, we've tried to reach out to people and haven't had that much success with it. And I think to actually do that, you really have to have some sort of organized and sustained effort that would come from the city. I think the future of Holt is to actually, uh, for the city and for nonprofits, to actually try to define what is the community of Holt and then develop a plan that responds to their needs. You know, th that to me is the, what, what good management for a, a space like like Holt entails, actually um, 
talking to people and finding out what they want, what they care about, and, and what they want to, to happen with the space. I think it's really important to engage the community and that's something that Save Our Cemeteries is always trying to work on, like awareness and education. We try to take care of every single cemetery, every single underground burial, tomb and coping in the city and that's a really tall order for a small nonprofit and we can't possibly take care of every single one. Whenever anybody visits a cemetery in any part of the country, it's very important to respect the space and treat the people buried in the cemetery and their families with as much respect as possible. I think that is particularly impor important, however, in Holt Cemetery, where the people interned within have a long tradition of being uh, disrespected by uh, their city and by outsiders. I would say, a, you know, a few ways to be respectful is don't walk in between the uh, graves unless you are going to a specific one. Um, maybe if you see some trash, you could pick it up. That would be really nice. That would be a really respectful thing to do. Um, but just as you would treat any normal cemetery, 